Now let's enter into details of converging and diverging lens. So first we are going to talk about converging lens in detail. And in every analysis we'll be using a lens equation and magnification formula. Now in numerical problems we find that transverse magnification or longitudinal magnification is not categorically specified. So we have to understand from the context of the problem whether the magnification being referred is a transverse or longitudinal. The criteria is very simple. In case of transverse magnification, we measure the size of image and object perpendicular to principal axis or optical axis. Whereas in case of diverging lenses or in case of longitudinal magnification, we refer the size of image and size of object along the principal axis. Now we will enter into the details of converging lenses. Here the shape is not being specified. So we simply mean the converging lens and remember it we are dealing with thin converging lenses. It can be double convex lens, it can be equiconvex lens. When we say equiconvex lens we mean the radii of curvature of two surfaces are same. It can be plano convex lens or it can be concave convex lens. So I am not referring to a specific shape. We are simply talking about converging thin lenses. Now let's go slowly one by one. Now when we have object located at infinity and we make use of lens equation, we find that image is formed at focus. Now u will be infinity over here and going by sign convention we get the value of v as f positive. Converging lens so focal length will be positive. So we get the value of v which is image distance as plus f. That is meaning that image is formed at a distance f and in positive direction that is towards the right of the lens in the direction of incident ray. Now if we work out magnification, now magnification in lenses is simply V by U. Now U is very large, we are taking U as infinity. So we find that the value of magnification is very small and its sign is negative. That means the image formed will be inverted with respect to object and it will be very very small, almost like a point and we say it will be a diminished image. So we conclude when we have object at infinity, the image is formed at focus towards the right of lens, very small in size, diminished, real and inverted. Now we move to the next situation. Now in this situation our object is located beyond 2f. Now when object is beyond 2f, and we need to locate the image, let's say our object is AB and we'll be denoting our image by A dash B dash. B dash is the corresponding image of tip and that is end B and A dash is the corresponding image of end A. We need to consider any two refracted rays. We have already learned that while going for image construction, we need to consider any two refracted rays. We have already discussed three rays. Now out of those three rays, we'll be taking two. Here, I take one ray parallel to optical axis and this ray after refraction will pass through focus. I take another ray passing through the optical center of lens. Now this ray from end B will go without deviation giving me point of intersection and that is precisely the position of image of end B. And we find from ray diagram that image is formed on the other side of lens and it is real, inverted and it is small in size. Now we take up the case when object is exactly located at 2f, going in a similar way taking two incident rays and their corresponding refracted rays, we find that the image is formed on the other side of lens at 2f exactly. 
the image is real inverted and it is of same size now we move to the next case where our object is located between f and 2f now in this case we can use principle of reversibility now principle of reversibility says that the path of light rays is reversible that means we can exchange in any optical system we can exchange the position of object and image that is the position of object and image in any optical system are exchangeable so we can expect here the object is between f and 2f the image will be beyond 2f on the other side of lens let's convince ourselves by using a ray diagram construction so let's consider again two rays one ray parallel to the optical axis and this ray will pass through focus and other ray passing through the optical center of the lens and this will go undeviated these two refracted rays meet beyond 2f forming the image now we see very clearly from the ray diagram that the image is formed beyond 2f and it is real inverted and its size is more than the size of object we say the image is magnified now we take up the next situation and in that next situation we have our object at focus again making use of principle of reversibility now this situation can be reverse of the very first situation where we have taken the object at infinity so when we take object at focus and again by using two rays one parallel to principal axis and the other passing through optical center we find that the refracted rays are not going to meet they are parallel so they will be meeting at infinity so the image will be formed at infinity and magnification will be very large so we say image is formed at infinity a real inverted and highly magnified now we move to the next case where our object is placed between focus and optical center of the lens now let's construct the ray diagram and this is an interesting case and it is different from the previous cases so when we consider two refracted rays so we find that image formed is virtual erect and magnified please have a look on the ray diagram very carefully again we have taken two rays one parallel to optical axis and other passing through optical center now the refracted rays through lens they are not going to meet on the other side of lens they will meet on being produced backward so we find that image found is virtual erect magnified and it is on the same side of lens as that of object so we come to conclusion now if we take all these cases together so we can summarize saying that whenever object is real the image can be real or virtual depending on the position of object